The Sega Saturn is my favorite gaming console of all time. It's not about how many games it had or how many hardware units it sold. The Saturn simply had some of the very best playing software available then, and much of it is still incredible to this very day. But among that fantastic core of Saturn greats, Sega and its third parties decided to release a number of games that absolutely boggled my mind. Games that on one hand make no sense from a marketing standpoint, while on the other adding nothing to the software the platform actually needed. In this episode, we will run down a list of games that I feel were completely unnecessary on the Sega Saturn, followed by a game I would have much rather have seen in its place. I pull no punches in this one, so let's get started. Virtua Fighter Kids dropped on the Saturn in 1996, a port of the arcade edition that launched earlier in the year. This game has always left me scratching my head and wondering just what the hell Sega was thinking. Seriously! By this point, the Saturn had multiple Virtua Fighter titles, including the unbelievably awesome second game. The kids edition here could be argued to have been aimed at younger kids, but it plays significantly worse than any of the others thanks to the tiny arms of the combatants adversely affecting your timing and judgment. You know what game would have gotten the attention of kids? Sonic the Fighters. This was planned for a Sega Saturn release but was cancelled before completion. I am genuinely at a loss as to why this was the case. It's true some of the 3D backgrounds in Sonic the Fighters would have been tough for the Saturn, but if Sega can trim back the backgrounds in the incredible Virtual Fighter 2, then surely they could have made some changes here as well. Sega needed more games that appealed to Western audiences, and another Virtual Fighter wasn't going to do it. It isn't that Sonic the Fighters was some awesome experience, but as far as fighting games that little Johnny could play with his buddies, Sonic the Fighters could have moved a few units for Sega. It also would have had the added appeal of only being available at home on the Sega Saturn. Nineteen ninety six also brought us Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition for the Saturn. I'll be up front and say that I was really excited for this, so I fully understand the target audience for it. A better looking and running Daytona with more content had its obvious appeal, but I also felt that Sega should have spent that time and those resources on something else. It's true that the original Saturn Daytona port runs a bit janky, and that polygon pop-in was rough in places, but it also played about as great as a racing game can play. If given the choice, I will take the original Daytona over the remake every single time. What I do wish Sega had done is brought home Indy 500 instead. This too was considered for the Saturn yet never was released, presumably because development shifted to Championship Circuit Edition. That's a real shame because I adored the arcade original. The tracks were inspired by real raceways and had Sega added a few more to the Saturn port, I can't help but to feel it could have been something worth playing. It had its own unique feel when drifting, and the wear on the tires had to be factored in to keep your position. If Sega had given it the attention that Championship Circuit Edition received, I think the Saturn would have been much better for it. Golden Axe The Duel was a 1995 2D fighting game based on an arcade title earlier in the year. It's set in the Golden Axe universe, but honestly, that was not something I thought the Saturn needed. It's true that more games are always nice, but by the time the US received it, games like Street Fighter Alpha were available. This is another one where you have to ask yourself, what was the audience? 
fans of Golden Axe were fans of beat-em-ups, and the market had turned sharply to expecting polygons in its fighting games. This game, no matter how well done, was never going to draw strong sales numbers. What really hurts is the simple fact Sega already had the perfect early game to launch on the Saturn, the Revenge of Death Adder. It would have added a genre the Saturn didn't have at that point. It would have been a home console exclusive, and it would have been in line with the expectations of the fan base. They could have added a few cool extras like the original cast being unlockable and playable, maybe some new magics for those characters. This would have at least appealed in Japan more where two-dimensional games were still selling well and the Saturn had its best market. Instead, we end up with an OK 2D fighter that was quickly lost in the deluge of Capcom releases that were infinitely more playable. Funky Head Boxers was a 1997 release that was based on a Sega-developed STV Titan arcade game released the year before. This ugly, piss-poor playing boxing game is a mess of terrible ideas. The ridiculous-looking fighters, the constant power shots that end the fights fast, and the irritating sound effects were an instant turn-off. The press at the time had a field day with it, and it's no surprise that Sega left it in Japan. To add even more pain, there was an update to it called Funky Head Boxers Plus, released just four months later. The thing is, is that there was another sports game on the STV arcade board that deserved a home conversion so much more. Tecmo World Cup 98 was a soccer game that used an incredible graphics engine and super power moves in what was one of the better games released for that board. And this is coming from someone that's not a huge fan of the sport. It played so well and was so easy to get into. The stadium looked great, the players were well done, and the power moves added excitement to the multiplayer. This would have been so much better as a Saturn game instead of being left in the arcade. I think it would have appealed much more in the US as well. One thing that always shocked me was how willing some game companies were to bring over PlayStation games to the Saturn. These ports were almost always lesser experiences at the best of times, and often, they were much, much worse. Enter Crazy Ivan, a 1997 release for the Saturn based on the PlayStation game released the year prior. This was a first-person shooter whose best attribute was its visuals, and on Saturn, that is completely lost. What's left is an awful port of a now ugly game that nobody wanted or needed. Everyone involved knew it was garbage too because no publisher was willing to bring it out in North America. I was always blown away by the decision to do this for the Saturn when Psygnosis had so many better options available. Why in the world was the Adventures of Lomax not chosen? The Saturn was made for a game like this and the PlayStation version had been well received critically. A game like Lomax could have been a hit in Japan and Europe, with any additional North American sales being icing on the cake. I understand that polygons were all the rage at the time, but by 1997 the Saturn market isn't courting new buyers. It already has a core audience that has embraced its exotic library, that is heavily 2D in nature anyway. When Mega Man X3 was ported to the Saturn in 1996, I imported it expecting it to be something more than a simple 16-bit port it ended up being. I was so disappointed and it was a really good lesson for me about jumping the gun and buying games I didn't know a lot about. 
This one had me wondering ever since why in the heck did Capcom not port over Mega Man the Power Battle instead? Think about it. The Power Battle had multiplayer. It had the best part of the Mega Man titles, the boss fights, and it was a great looking game. It was a perfect match for the Saturn and could have easily been ported for a 1996 release. Instead we got a weak port of a Super Nintendo game that really didn't add anything that made it much worth playing again. The Saturn would have been the only home console at the time that would have had a port of the power battle, greatly adding to its appeal. Capcom could have worked its magic and added a few more bosses in there to make the port that much more special. Capcom was already well experienced to porting its arcade games to the Saturn by then, so their programmers would have made short work of it. I would have been much happier had the Saturn received a compilation of the first three Mega Man X games, but dropping $60 for just one was not money well spent. When Mortal Kombat 2 was released in 1996 for the Saturn, I couldn't believe how badly Acclaim had messed it up. The sound effects were utterly broken, the loading hitches during gameplay were terrible, and it fell short of the playability of even the 16-bit releases. To make matters worse, it wasn't even what we were originally promised. Acclaim announced Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 Collector's Edition for release on the Saturn, a compilation of the first two arcade releases. This was genuinely exciting because at that point, the only versions of the first game we had seen were heavily cut back from the arcade original. This would have potentially given the Saturn the first real close to arcade perfect version of that first game. And to be quite honest, I would have much rather have had it than part two. I love part two, mind you, but we already had great Super Nintendo and 32 exports of that. A nearly arcade perfect port of the first would have been much more interesting to me and my friends. As far as I'm concerned, they dropped the wrong one from the compilation. Doom on the Saturn landed in 1997 was nothing short of a disgrace. How could a port released after all the other console versions run so poorly? Playing this after the PlayStation version was demoralizing as a Saturn fan. It really summed up the Saturn market when the 32X version, released a year and a half earlier, played so much better. We can point fingers and blame Carmack all day long, but the end result was still a port that left many of us wondering why it was even necessary. I would have much rather have had Rage Software and GT Interactive work with Acclaim and finish the Saturn port of Killing Time. Whatever was holding that up and causing the delays could have been ironed out and we could have gotten something worth our time. I always thought Killing Time would have appealed to a much bigger audience had it run better and the combat been tightened up some. By 1997, Doom was an old hat and both Duke Nukem 3D and Quake were right around the corner. Killing Time had only been available on one home console that did not have a large installed base, and I feel a custom Saturn engine would have really benefited it. Instead, we were strapped with a port of doom nobody really wanted, adding yet another black eye to the Saturn's reputation. When Time Warner Interactive showed up in 1995 with a port of race driving, I had to laugh. What in the hell were they thinking, and who exactly was this game for? At this point, you have Daytona USA wowing Saturn owners, and here comes the slow plodding race driving to compete. Time Warner even had their own virtual racing port in the works that would soon release. This product made zero sense in a market 
that would soon see many more racing games competing with it. A much better choice would have been a port of another Atari Games arcade classic, Road Riot 4-Wheel Drive. This was an off-road dune buggy racer with tracks from all over the world. It was extremely popular in 1991 when it was first released, and the only other home port available was a watered-down Super Nintendo edition that looked nowhere near as nice. On Saturn, it could have been close to arcade perfect, and its pseudo-3D nature would have fit right in with the polygon craze of the era. If Time Warner wanted an Atari games property that would have fit in well with what else was being released on the Saturn, this right here was the way to go. Sega of America was responsible for some real stinkers on the Saturn, and few were as embarrassing as 1995's Black Fire. This was developed by Nova Logic and Sega Away Team, and what was an obvious rush job that leaves you wondering how anyone at Sega thought this was going to compete with the likes of Warhawk or Air Combat. It's supposed to be a helicopter flight sim, but all you do is move around barren environments frantically firing at enemies that look like splotches of pixels on the screen. It ran bad, it looked worse, and the gameplay was as bare bones as they come. The question here is, why didn't Sega use a tried and true franchise for a helicopter game? How about make Thunder Blade 2 in a similar style as the original? Imagine a VDP2 infinite playfield with polygon buildings, trees, rocks, and enemies tied together with a playstyle of forward scrolling shooting like the original. Blackfire had three-dimensional go-anywhere environments, but with no detail and everything looking the same, what did it matter? This was a great opportunity to mix 2D sprite scaling and 3D polygons, all while bringing back a beloved Sega arcade game. All you have to do is imagine a Thunder Blade 2 using Bulk Slash as a proof of concept, and you should know exactly what I mean. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. To the left. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. To the left. <gasps> wow! I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of completely unnecessary Sega Saturn games. I know some of you probably love the games I propose be replaced, but here's the good news, you win. You still get to go back and play those stinkers all you want. I do wonder what could have been if developers and publishers made better decisions, however. I think one reason the Saturn suffered was that many companies that made games for it just didn't read the market well, at least outside of Japan. Often we were given games that lacked appeal or failed to continue popular franchises Sega hardware had been known for. Even low profile titles like The Adventures of Lomax had some connection with Sega's past. Of course, there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to creating and publishing game software. It's often not nearly as black and white as it seems. Even so, it's always fun to speculate what may have worked on your favorite platform. If you enjoyed the topic, we can certainly explore other consoles with the same idea. Something like the Sega CD is ripe for exploration. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.